Hey lovies, what the Rudges up fam? If you're new here, my name is Terry Ann or TA and I'm a Boston based lifestyle YouTuber and this is my channel. Okay, there was a loud noise so I had to break, but I'm back. So as I film this video today, I am five weeks and two days pregnant. Before I jump in to all of the symptoms and everything, this is my first kind of pregnancy update video. And I just wanna start off by saying, I am so happy. <laughs> I think all the other videos were kind of just reactions to things that were happening, but I wanted to sit down and say like, I am super happy, I'm super excited. Um, even with all the symptoms and the pains and the random cramps and everything that I'm kind of experiencing, I am just, over the moon every day i wake up and i'm just so happy and thankful that this is happening to me um i truly never wanted anything more than to be a mom like i, I kind of like went through the motions i went to college i went to law school i i got the job like i got the the career established and everything but i literally could not care less about any of those things like truly hate hated every second of all of those things actually. This is the only thing I've ever wanted to do. Um, so I am just really happy to be pregnant and I know that it's not easy for everyone. So I'm just grateful to just kind of be here. With that being said, before I get into again, all of these other things, with that being said, I showed you guys um, a video of when I was taking um, the modern fertility test and I was freaking out because I'm not good with needles. Um, and so the modern fertility test is a hormone test and it kind of just kind of gives you kind of just some insight on your fertility a bit. I took the modern fertility test and I got my results and the results essentially said that um, everything was great except, <laughs> except that I have um, a smaller window to get pregnant, which means I don't have a lot of eggs. The eggs that I have are great and healthy and it didn't mean I could not get pregnant. It just means that while some women may be able to get pregnant until they're 44 um, or 50, um, I might only be able to get pregnant until I'm 39. So some people have this window to get pregnant I had this window to get pregnant. And essentially those results were saying that if I wanted to have kids, I basically needed to start trying sooner rather than later. Um, and I was really grateful for those results. I mean, it was very scary for me because it's just like, oh my gosh, I hope it's not too late because I don't know where I am on that spectrum. But it was super helpful for me because it let me know where I actually needed to be um, and, and what I needed to start doing. Um, and what I needed to start doing was start trying. <laughs> um, so to be honest though, the test results did not change much of our plans. We always intended to start trying for a baby shortly before the wedding. Um, because I, we both knew right away, especially me, that I wanted to start having kids right away. And just for those of you who don't know, if maybe you're wondering, I'm 31 years old. I turned 31 May 25th, 2021, and today is July 4th, 2021. So I am 31 years old. So I was just like, you know, like I'm in my 30s. Like I did all those things that I listed out to you guys. So I waited a while and I got myself established before I decided to have kids. Um, so, the only thing that changed is that Michael and I started trying one month sooner than we were going to. And to be honest, we didn't even really try. I think we were both set on the timeline that we had already established and we just kind of half tried <laughs> that in April. Um, so in April we, of 2021, we, we started trying. I don't even really count it because we did. I didn't track anything. I didn't do anything really. I was just like, okay, like if we get pregnant, we get pregnant. And I was kind of hoping that we wouldn't because I didn't want, I wanted to be able to fit into my wedding dress and I wanted to be able to go on our honeymoon. And I, you know, so we had those things. Um, so we, we tried for real in May and it did not work out because my, my flow tracker 
said that I was ovulating one week and come to find out I was actually ovulating the week before. So I missed my fertile and ovulation window completely. And so that one didn't take. So once I kind of figured that out in June of 2021, I did not trust my flow tracker and I, we went ahead and tried based on the calculations that I had made based on the mistake that was made in that last try. And so come to find out, I, my fertile window is about, my fertile window starts one day, one full day or two days after the end of my cycle, which is a lot faster than other people. Usually you have a week between the end of your period and when you start becoming fertile. I have one day between the end of my period and when I become fertile. When I look through the history, sometimes I have two days. That's it. So every other time, my, my flow tracker would have been totally wrong because I am not like other women. And that's why it's usually good to just kind of trust your body, listen to yourself and not really focus too much on that. Um, so that's a little bit of how I got pregnant. <laughs> um, so we realized we need to start sooner. So we did start sooner, kind of. Um, and as you can tell from what I just explained, we got pregnant on the second try, the second month of trying, which is super soon. We were, again, obviously planning on starting before our wedding because we did not expect to get pregnant so quickly. We were like, we'll give ourselves a few extra months of trying with kind of the expectation that it would take us until late fall, maybe early winter before we actually successfully became pregnant because on average it takes women a year to get pregnant. So I was thinking, okay, like maybe around six months, seven months for us, I'm 31. Like I didn't know, like I've never tried to get pregnant before. And we just got so lucky, we're so blessed and we got pregnant on the second try. We calculate that I conceived on like June 12th-ish. Um, and I started feeling symptoms that I didn't know were pregnancy symptoms, but then I kind of caught on pretty quickly. Um, June 22nd slash June 23rd. So on June 22nd, I started to get a fever. It was really bizarre. I didn't know fevers could be a sign of pregnancy at all. Um, I got a fever and it wasn't like a regular fever because it would only last like an hour and I would feel super hot. My cheeks would feel super, super hot. And then when I took my temperature, my temperature was 99 degrees and then um, it would go away. I wouldn't feel hot anymore. And then I would get a, like an hour later, a terrible headache and feel super nauseous. And then I would sleep it off. And then the next day, the same exact thing happened at the same exact time. So around 10.30, I start to feel hot. And I think the word that they use online to describe this specific symptom is flushed. When my cheeks felt super hot, my face felt super hot. And they're apparently, when you're in early pregnancy, due to like the hormones and stuff, you're temperature will spike. So it wasn't a true fever, it was a low grade fever. And that's kind of telling if you, if you know, that's kind of like a sign that something might be happening. And after the fever, same thing, headache and nausea. So I went ahead on the, yes. So on the 22nd, actually, I saw that there was an increase in temperature and I looked online and it said it could be early pregnancy. So I went and got some early pregnancy tests on the 22nd, I think. And I took one that night and it said no. And these were the early pregnancy tests. So then I, on the 23rd, when it happened again, I was just like, I don't feel good. Like something's up. I'm just gonna take one more. And I took one of those little strips and I saw a um, super, super, super faint line. And then I saw that I was pregnant. If you kind of wanna watch that, you can go ahead and watch it. Um, in this finding out I'm pregnant video because that's a whole thing. So obviously I was pregnant. So my first symptoms, at that point I was about three weeks. My first real symptoms occurred at three weeks and it was a low grade fever, headache, nausea, 
and then I start to get extreme dizziness. Um, once I found out I was pregnant, I wanted to get a gift because I knew I was going to be seeing my family. I found out I was pregnant on a Wednesday. That was the first positive test. And I would be seeing my family on Friday because that Saturday would be my bridal shower. So I knew I was pregnant at my bridal shower. I went to the store to get some stuff and like I couldn't look up straight. Like when I looked up, I felt so dizzy. Um, and that extreme dizziness made me feel so nauseous. And I was like leaving TJ Maxx with Mike and I was like spitting, like I could not, like I just couldn't deal. After a few days of that, like that Friday, June 25th, um, I felt totally fine. But that Friday, June 25th, I actually started spotting. Um, and this is a pregnancy symptom I really, really, really want to talk about because I was very frightened. So on Friday, I started spotting. It was just very, very little actually. I wasn't too scared then. I was just like a little bit nervous, but I had known and heard about implantation bleeding. Um, and so I always knew that a little bit of, spot of spotting was normal and based on the apps, because I was on the pregnancy app by that point, it was telling me that at week three, like implantation was starting to happen. So like, don't be surprised if you see some spotting. So I just had some really light pink, like discharge. And I was like, okay, this is normal. After the bridal shower, like that Sunday, like the 27th, the 28th, um, I had some real bleeding and that freaked me out. So what I will describe is I stood up and I felt like a trickle of liquid. And when I checked, it was a darker pink color and there was just more of it than I would consider spotting. I wouldn't call that spotting. I would call that like a small flow. Um, and I thought that I was miscarriage, like I was having a miscarriage um, and I was very upset. And I went to the doctor, like I called the doctor's office um, and they let me come in to take a blood test. Um, after I had that first trickle, about two hours later, I stood up and I had another trickle um, that was like the same color, same consistency and everything. Um, I was really scared. So what I will say now is after those two instances, I have not experienced any more of those trickles. I've had a little bit of spotting here and there, which is still normal, um, but not really much spotting at all since. And when I went to the doctor, I got two rounds of blood tests, um, which essentially confirmed from the doctor that yes, I am pregnant and also confirmed that the pregnancy is moving along. My HCG levels, which is the hormone that indicates pregnancy, it's supposed to double every single day and mine was doing that. So from the first blood test to the next one, the HCG levels were growing, which means the baby is growing inside me. <sighs> okay, so with that being said, if you're here and you are wondering about implantation bleeding and anything, I'm gonna give you the information that I kind of wish that I knew. Um, one, implantation bleeding isn't just spotting. It can feel kind of like a flow. The difference is, is that people will say it should be light pink. It should not be like very thick red, like your real flow is, because that's not implantation bleeding. Another thing is the trickle that I had was extremely watery. Like it was like very, I know this is like my, may, maybe a little bit TMI, but it was extremely, extremely watery. And that's also key. If it's thick, if it's viscous, if it's um, very red, um, if you see clotting in it, that is that is a period, that is a, a miscarriage. Um, and mine was not that. Also, I was just confused because here, here's another thing. I've always heard of implantation bleeding as spotting. It can also be a light flow. So that trickle is what I would have considered a light flow. I thought that was too much, which is why I was freaked out, but it can range from just a little bit of spotting to a light flow. So if you have a light flow, like, and you're just like, what is going on? But it's still very light pink and it's very watery. Don't be too concerned. Still go talk to your doctor, let your doctor know, and maybe even get blood tests just to ensure that everything's okay, but don't freak out. Um, 
And another thing that I saw that I thought was really helpful was that if it couldn't fill up a pad, you're probably okay. Like if you put something on and that trickle happens and you, you know how like sometimes when you see, you have a pad and you can see from the bottom, the other side, the blood that's settled. If you can't, if it wouldn't do that, you're fine. Um, honestly, it wouldn't even truly fill a panty liner. It would cover it, but it wouldn't like soak a panty liner. Um, and I think that's the main difference between implantation bleeding and actually like a loss. Um, so that was something that um, was really freaked me out during this first month that I am glad that we've kind of overcome now at this point. Um, other than that, I haven't had any, oh, one other thing about implantation bleeding I just wanna say that made me feel super comforted. With those trickles and with the spotting, I never at any point experienced any cramping. They usually say if you're experiencing that kind of bleeding with cramping, it's usually working its way up to um, a period. Um, so I didn't experience any cramping. So that was that's really good. Other than that, the only symptoms that I've experienced are those very typical pregnancy symptoms. I'm not nauseous every single day. Every now and then something around me will make me feel a little nauseous and I'm just like, ugh and it lasts for like an hour or something and that's it. Um, I think my biggest, most consistent symptom is hunger. I am hungry all the time. I am hungry while I'm eating. I am hungry while I'm sleeping. I am hungry, hungry hippo. Like I'm just so hungry all the time, um, which is, different for me because I usually don't have an appetite, but I'm not missing a meal these days. I do get a little bit of pelvic pain um, when I'm standing for too long. So I'm very interested to see how the wedding goes because the wedding is 20 days away. So um, <laughs> I'm a little bit nervous about that, but I do get some just random pains when I am up and standing for too long, borderline like tiny cramping. Um, so I try to take it easy when I am standing. I try to like just not do it for long periods of time and sit down and take a break when I when I need it. Um, so those are the main symptoms that I have been experiencing or that I experienced in the first month of pregnancy. I think it's really crazy that I'm out of the first month of pregnancy because like I wasn't even, I didn't even know I was pregnant for half of it, for more than half of it. So it was kind of weird that it kind of already just happened, but I'm really excited um, that, that that's over and that we are on to a new month and a new week and every week I get more and more excited for the next week. Um, I'm just really praying to get to eight weeks, which is when I get to go to the doctor. Um, because I mean, if it weren't for the implantation bleeding, I would have never seen a doctor. Apparently they don't see you at all until you're eight weeks and that's when they try to do an ultrasound. I think because of my first visit, I got all the other blood work and stuff out of the way. They just did it then. Um, maybe they'll do it again, I'm not really sure. But yeah, um, I will be seeing the doctor on July 29th for the first ultrasound, I believe. And yeah, I just cannot wait to kind of just finish this pregnancy and have a baby. So, so yeah, I'm just super excited. Um, so yeah. This is the first of quite a few pregnancy updates. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If there's any other information that you think that I should include in the next pregnancy update, go ahead and leave it below in the comments and I'll make sure to kind of add that information because I have not ever done this before, but I have been watching a bunch of videos on YouTube. So um, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit the thumbs up button and go ahead and hit the subscribe button to follow me on this journey of having a baby for the first time ever and becoming a mom. And um, yeah, thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.